very, very proud to introduce uh, an amazing children's rights defender here in Eddie Makosi. Now, there are times in our lives, I think, where we know we've met somebody special. Um, it may be that our heart's thumping because we've just met somebody that we'd like to be a girlfriend or a boyfriend, or that we've just seen someone overachieve, achieve absolute adversity and uh, win at the Olympics or the Paralympics, and that puts a smile on our face. Or it might be that we've just heard a speech or we'll hear a speech in the next half an hour that really puts a lump in our throat. But I had that special moment six months ago when I first met Eddie at the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, where Eddie was living in a one-roomed house, and we talked for about two hours as we walked through the rubbish-strewn streets and dusty avenues um, of Kakuma. And he told me his story. He told me about Congo, his homeland, where there's a children's parliament, um, which is really effective, actually. And at 14 years old, he decided he needed to put some things right about his fellow children in the Congo, and he was elected to that parliament. And over the next three years, he did so much work reconciling families that had been torn apart by natural disasters and man-made disasters. And at the age of 17, he was elected the leader of that parliament. And in the run-up to the 2011 general election in the Congo, he was instrumental in creating a children's act to project, protect children against being drafted into the army and being used for political purposes. And after the election, And after the election, the politicians didn't actually implement many of the things that Eddie had helped put together. So he spoke up about it, and eventually he had to flee the country. And he had to go via Rwanda to Uganda and ended up in this single room in Kakuma. And in these last six months since we first met, Eddie's applied to come here, applied to speak, applied to share his story with you guys. He's moved to Nairobi and now works for a fantastic charity called PhilMaid, where he works in the slums of Kibera, teaching children about their rights and trying to improve their lives. So I'd love to put your hands together to introduce my friend, your speaking delegate, Eddie Makosi. Can't believe I'm here. Uh, thank you, Paul, for this amazing introduction. And um, thank you, Kate and David, for this amazing work. One Young World is a real, a true family. Thank you very much. Good, mo good morning and peace profound to all of you. Thank you, One Young World, for this chance to share my story. I am Eddie Musoke Daniel, 22 years old, born and brought up in the Democratic Republic of Congo, a country at war since 1997. At the age of nine, the volcano Nyiragongo erupted and destroyed my town. We had to flee to Rwanda. I saw children homeless and separated from their families. I saw women giving birth alone. I saw many upsetting scenes. To support the many homeless children, the young people from my town, Goma, my province, North Kivu, created the Children's Parliament. I joined in 2005, age 13. Four years later, I became the president of the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo Children's Parliament. At this time, three rebel groups operated in Congo. They were enrolling children into their armies. Thousands of kids were being killed. Women were sexually abused. Dozens of peace conventions and agreements were signed. Nothing changed. Tribes were fighting, accusing each other of supporting the rebels. The question was how to reunite the country and live together as one nation. As the president, I focus on children's rights, conflict resolution, and promoting peace. We lobbied the ministers of child protection, minister of justice, minister of youth, 
to improve children's rights, the National Assembly created and adopted the Child Protection Act of the Democratic Republic of Congo in January 2009. And we brought reconciliation to nearly 5,000 families. In 2011, during the country's general elections, children were again forced into rebel armies. I created the Zero Child campaign. In one week, we encouraged 400 children, some as young as 13, to return their electoral and political party cards back to the authorities. We did not want to ask them to give up their right to vote or their party membership. But holding onto these documents meant they would lose the protection of the national and international community. But 149 children were recruited to the battlefield, and seven were killed during the fighting. I criticized the politicians and rebel leaders for allowing the illegal use of child soldiers and delivered a reports at a national press conference about the children's involvement. I then became a political and kidnap target and had to flee my country for Kenya. My new life started a refugee life. Hopeless, smileless, Lonely. At the refugee camp Kakuma, I joined Film Aid, who used the power of film to inform and make people smile again. I promoted human rights through outreach programs, sharing my knowledge and experience with over 3,000 other refugees through training programs and workshops. I also led the Do Good, Feel Good project focusing on fighting gender-based violence in the camp. Peace is not a familiar word to many refugees. I wish the gun was a pen and the bullet a pencil. I wish there were more educated people and far fewer refugees. And use these things to resolve peacefully our differences for the sake of the children. But through all my experiences, I've learned that peace starts with you and me, right here within us. So I challenge you all, if a young child, a 17-year-old boy, can stand up to rebels, to politicians, and to death threats for the sake of human rights. Just think what you, the educated, connected, and inspired people in this room can achieve together. Let's act to preserve children's lives and freedoms. Many thanks.